Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist DT from WeatherRisk.com, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's uh, 1 a.m. here on January 24th, and we're going to be talking about lots of things in This Week in Weather, so let's get right to it. Well, we'll be talking our topics here will be, well, it's the halfway point of the winter, actually, and so far... We'll take, take a look at the pattern and my winter forecast, which is going to bust very, very badly. So uh, we can't avoid it. We have to talk about it and see what we can learn and why. Well, we are going to see the cold air return here for the end of uh, January 27th to fe February 4th. Hints of something maybe uh, the mid-Atlantic on January 30th and then also looking at February. And maybe there's a chance for something in February. We'll see. All right, this is the surface map from early on here on uh, Monday morning, the big nor'easter coming up the coast. And, of course, it took a more easterly track than I thought last week, which is why I made that post over on the social media Facebook page that I was going to be wrong. It's coming off the coast and is a nor'easter and a very powerful one at that matter as well. And it's only a few degrees away from being a significant snowstorm for New York City, New Jersey, and coastal New England. But those degrees are important and they do matter. And of course, this is the uh, midday uh, surface map as well, so the system is really cranking. All right, let's take a look at this pattern here over the last uh, couple of months and see some interesting things here. So let's get the marker out and talk about this here. Now, this is for the last week, and we can see the cold temperatures, obviously, in the Pacific Northwest and the Rockies. And of course, this is uh, over the past two weeks. Here's the coldest temperatures here and the warmest temperatures in this area and in this area as well. So we all know that, but if we go further out in time, uh, go further back in time. Now this is uh, this is over the past 60 days, and again we can see the coldest temperatures relative to normal over the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies, and the warmest temperatures over the Deep South and the southeastern states, up into the Mid Atlantic region. And if we continue going further back in time, this goes back to December. Again, the same sort of pattern. Look where the coldest temperatures are. Look where the warmest temperatures are relative to normal. We see a very persistent pattern. And of course, the rainfall, this is last uh, 60 days, I believe. And we can see here that, again, notice that the best precipitation clearly over the western half of the country, where the mean trough has been. That's not a surprise, but it means something. And then this is, uh, and we'll go back to November as well. And you can see the same sort of thing. Now, my forecast for December, um, I had a fairly mild first half of December and cold in the second half. That kind of turned out to be okay. That wasn't too bad. Uh, but I did show a fairly dry pattern here over the second half of December. That worked out okay. But my January forecast is a disaster. There's no way to describe it. There's no massive trough in the eastern United States in the first half of the country. I could not be more wrong. So let's just say what this is. This is suckage. So that's what that is. It just simply did not work out. And my February forecast, that's got problems as well. Uh, we'll see if that works out, but I don't think it's going to. So uh, let's take a look at why. Now, one of the reasons is because of the, this is, my analog year was the winter of January, uh, the winter of 2013, 2014. And I picked that year because that was also a QBO. Let me call it, this is a QBO, which was, strongly positive which is what we're having this winter so that was a match the problem is that in 2014 uh, in January we had this huge pool of super warm water known as the blob we all saw the media talk about it that was altering the jet stream and do, making it do this so that's what the issue was I thought that warm water was going to last it clearly did not and we can see why not now, this is uh, January 19th. Look at the difference. Instead of that pool of super warm water, we have this pool of super cold water right in here. And what that does, is that creates a deep trough here over, the, over, over here in the northeastern Pacific, which is slamming California with storms and making it pretty mild here over uh, much of the eastern deep south and the eastern half of the country. So that's what the difference in the pattern has been. That's one of the differences. The other differences, and this is from my winter forecast, you can see it here. I mentioned this in the what could go wrong category, which all forecasters, when you're doing seasonal work, should always talk about what could go wrong. The problem, as I said, is that the overall pattern in the Pacific over the last 30 days, you can see the pool of warm water has decreased significantly. This is what it was back in mid-October. This was in mid-November. Look at the change. So you can see the temperatures really dropping here, and, the, and that was a problem. So that was the first issue. The second issue 
is that, of course, we could see the polar vortex was in a terribly long position in Siberia, and that and this would support a Omega Ridge pattern over Alaska, which is exactly what we've been seeing for weeks and weeks and weeks. Again, having the polar vortex in Siberia, the start of the cold season is a disaster for the East Coast winter lovers. That's been a problem as well. And then finally, I talked about the very enhanced Pacific Jet and the strong QBO. And of course, we could see that, in fact, is what exactly has been going on here. We've been getting hammered with a very strong QBO, which has been feeding the jet stream uh, and the Pacific Jet and making it very enhanced. And that's been keeping it uh, a very mild pattern. In fact, it's almost impossible when you have a QBO that is um, plus 10 or higher. If you look at all the winters going back to World War II, 1945, there are very few winters in the eastern United States which were great winters when you have the QBO plus 10 or higher. It, very few of them, but not many of them. Um, it's, so that's a really strong indication there as well. And if we look at the actual data, we can see the QBO is just howling. Now, this is as of, um, call my market here, this is uh, February, this is, excuse me, January 20th. And this is the, the, the line here. This is the equator where the QBO is. Okay, so this is right along the equator. And you can see that green stuff is plus 15, plus 16. Now, this is back in uh, December. You can see back in October here, it was in this stuff here, the dark green, which is plus 12. So if anything, the thing is definitely still going up, which is just absolutely amazing. And you can see that even at times in here, in it's been a plus uh, the yellow stuff, which is like plus 17 back in uh, the end of December. So very strong QBO. It's not showing any signs of breaking down. And that's just the kiss of death. Now let's take a look at the overall pattern here as of January, January 23rd. We can see lots of important features. One, obviously, you want to take a look at here. There's our polar vortex. It's up here over the North Pole. We have a blocking pattern here, which is nice. And that, if that continues, that would force the NEO to go negative. But the problem is you also have an upper low here over, over, over Greenland. So as a result, the NEO is neutral. The Arctic Oscillation is neutral. The PNA, well, there's your monster trough on the West Coast. So that's obviously negative. And then the EPO is also neutral as well. So not a great pattern, not ideal, but it could be worse, I suppose. Now, the temperatures are going to, the cold front is going to arrive here on Friday, and the temperatures are getting colder. These are morning low temperatures for Saturday. Okay, that's cold. It's not earth shaking, but it's cold. This is Sunday, a few degrees colder, and this is Monday, even colder. So the pattern is getting colder. Nothing dramatic, but it is getting colder. All right, let's take a look at something that I'm seeing here, possibilities. Now, this is the jet stream map here, 120 hours out from the European on coming out this Monday afternoon. Now, there are several pieces of energy here, which I'm getting concerned about. Now, all of this stuff is still out in the Pacific Ocean, so it's very possible the models could show a big change here over the next couple of days. So, the first piece of energy is, let me hide up this one right here. And then we have this one right here. Now, what happens is the European model keeps this feature hanging back in this direction. So when this comes through, it never gets a chance to phase. But I don't know if that's correct. It might not be. Let's take a look at this. Now, this is 138 hours. And again, the uh, piece of energy that was up here is now down in here. But this southern energy is still hanging back. If these two were to phase, you would get a big trough on the east coast and a big storm. But they don't. The European keeps that piece of energy hanging back here. Is that right? I don't know. Maybe. We still have a 50-50 low. If you notice it right here, um, excuse me, this is a 50-50 low right there. You can see that to over southeastern Canada. So we have cold air in place. It's a fairly good-looking pattern. But uh, again, we don't know what's going to happen with the southern energy. Now, this is 174 hours out, Monday, January 30th. Look how strong this short wave is. Look at this trough here, folks. This is very close to being an East Coast snowstorm. There is the southern piece of energy. See it? Still hanging back there. If this piece is over here, boom. Boom. But I don't know if it's going to be there. This is speculation. I'm not calling for it. It's just a possibility, something to watch out for. And then this is the 6 to 10 day. We have a big ridge on the west coast, the trough on the east coast, a nice polar vortex way up there by Baffin Island in Greenland. So again, this is a cold pattern. But in this sort of pattern here, uh, the NAO is positive. And the, pole, and the Arctic Oscillation is probably either neutral or positive as well. So not it's a typical winter cold pattern, but it's nothing to get excited about in terms of snowstorms. Now, let's take a look at the MJO. Here is the MJO moving out of phase one into phase two. 
Okay, that's not a surprise. We saw that. And this is the different models. Here's the European model, which takes in the February, which takes it into the neutral circle. You can see right in here, there's a neutral circle, and it brings it up into here. Okay. And the other models are the same sort of thing. This here is the European uh, weekly model or the ensemble, I should say. And you can see it brings it back out to phase seven, almost into phase eight by January 20th. And this is the uh, Australian model, the same sort of thing. Now, the reason why I make this point is because this affects what happens down the road. Now, this is uh, the 360 hour map, and we can see the Omega Ridge is reforming here. See this Omega Ridge uh, very clearly right up in here, and you can see it reforming. Now, that's not a great sign for winter coast, east coast lovers for winter storms. You make you get, the trough begins to redevelop on the west coast. The polar vortex is still way to the north. We have a little bit of pipe blocking here, not great. Um, and you have a broad general trough here. So you're not, this sort of pattern is not going to produce a massive Arctic outbreak for the cold air coming southward. You're going to get waves of cold air. And it might do something, but it's not a great pattern. We've seen this several times where the Arctic, we see this Omega Ridge, we get a week or shot of a week, maybe 10 days of cold air, then the pattern breaks down again. Now you can see 11 to 15 day, again, the European model. Because the model is doing this, it's got this trough here, and then it does this, and then it does this again. Temperatures jump up here in the lower plains in the lower Midwest. We cannot get it to stay cold in this sort of pattern. And this is the CFS. Notice it's doing the same sort of thing here for mid-February. has the Omega Ridge. You can see it right there. And, of course, what it does is now we have a flow of cold air here. That's nice. And the Pacific Jet here. But this is not plunging. It's like a glancing blow. And the polar vortex is still way up here in the north, up in the Arctic uh, Baffin Island, which is very common when you have a very strong westerly QBO. So it's not a horrible pattern. It's just not great. So it's, eh, you know, it's, eh, it's better than nothing, I suppose, but better than last winter. And if we look at the, if we take this pattern and we roll it over into the 16 to 20 day, what do we see? Well, we see a, a big, uh, let me call it my marker, a nice big, uh, huge ridge here. There's your Omega Ridge and then a flat ridge here and a bit of blocking over Greenland. And there is some really cold temperatures up in this area, but it's not a, a massive trough over the eastern United States. This is sort of overrunning or an ice storm. And if we look at the temperatures in the 16 to 20 day, again, this will take us in the mid-February, warm here and warm here so this is like an ice storm pattern here see all the cold air and again the coldest temperatures over southwest canada the upper plains the pacific northwest and kind of like an ice storm situation here not a snowstorm pattern more like an ice storm pattern we'll see if that's the case now this is the european weekly which takes us to mid-february and again same sort of thing it has a bit of deeper trough over the eastern united states so that's better the trough is a little deep as you can see but we also have that omega ridge so maybe the European weekly might be onto something. And if we look at our temperatures, again, all the serious cold is up north of the U.S.-Canada border. South of it, it's cold, but it's not earth shattering. It's not severe cold. And that's because the pattern does not allow these Arctic air masses to come plunging southward. Anyway, that's this week in weather. We'll see what happens later on. And, you know, in terms of that snowstorm threat, briefly we talked about here in mid-February, uh, if that MJO, by the way, is not going into phase eight, if it stays in the neutral circle, that's going to go bye bye. So we'll just have to wait and see how that develops. But, uh, you know, maybe there might be something mid February, but I'm not as optimistic as it was last week. I think our best shot is going to be something maybe on January 20th. And even then, it might just be snow showers in the Mid Atlantic region. I don't know if it's going to be an actual snow event per se, but we'll watch it. This is meteorologist DT. I'll catch you over on the Facebook page.